Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect Operation Center version 817. I'll be demoing how to set up S3 offload of data from Spectrum Protect Plus into Spectrum Protect container storage pools for long-term protection. I'll show you how to set up an object agent and object client in Spectrum Protect. And then I'll show you how to define a repository server that correlates with those object agents inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First, we need to create an object agent by going into servers and then select the Spectrum Protect server you want. Click details and on the left hand side, click object agent. There will be one object agent per Spectrum Protect server. So the first time you go into this object agent area, it will ask you to add an agent. So click add. You'll give the agent a name, and I recommend that name have the Spectrum Protect server name in it. So I'm going to call this Proto Agent. You can either keep the default port of 9000 or you can change it. The specific endpoint will be used by the object client to send information directly to this object agent, and it will reflect the port. So if you change the port, that'll also change the endpoint information. We'll also be creating an agent certificate. So when we click add, the next step you're going to have to do is complete the configuration. You will need to start the object agent service and a Windows service that runs it in the background and runs it when the system is restarted. And it's going to be by going out to this direct and running this specific command. Now one thing to know is that if you are using a Linux or Windows server, then those can be onboard agents. But if it is an AIX server, it will be an offboard agent that works in conjunction with a Linux machine. So let's go out to this Windows machine. We're going to go ahead and paste that command in that we got from the Operations Center. And you can see now that the agent was started correctly. We're now going to take a look at the directory that was created as part of this process. And inside of this directory, there are going to be a couple of things. We're going to have a config file as well as a certificate file. Now that the object agent is created, we're going to create an object client by going into clients, clicking on the plus client button, and choosing the new object client option. Go ahead and click next. The first thing you're going to do is select the server that this object client will be added to. Now it's checking to make sure that there is already an object agent defined on the server proto. And since we just set that up, we will not be prompted to add one in. If you had not set one up, you would be prompted. At Remember, you can have multiple object clients working with one object agent that we defined for this Spectrum Protect server. Now you can select if you want to replicate the S3 offloaded data to a second Spectrum Protect server. This would be Spectrum Protect replication, not Spectrum Protect Plus replication. One thing to note is that Spectrum Protect Plus cannot restore directly a replicated copy that resides on the target Spectrum Protect server. Spectrum Protect Plus can only restore directly from the primary Spectrum Protect server. Go ahead and press Next. Now you're going to be asked to name this object client. We recommend naming it after the Spectrum Protect Plus server that you're going to be connecting it with. And then optionally, you can provide a contact name and an email address associated with that Spectrum Protect Plus server. When you're done, go ahead and press Next. Next, you'll need to choose a policy for the object client. The objects stored to an object client are always backup objects, so the domain the node is assigned to must have a backup copy group, but does not require an archive copy group. And only container storage pools are supported for object data, and so the storage pool specified in the copy group destination must be a container storage pool, either directory or cloud. All objects are uniquely named and there are never inactive versions of these objects. So the versions of data exists inside of the policy can be set to one. And because there are never any inactive objects, the retain extra and retain only settings can be set to zero. 
At the end of this video, I'll show you how to make changes to the policy domain if you need to. Now we're going to go ahead and choose the policy that this object client will be associated with, with and we'll go ahead and click Next. Object clients also will show up as at risk if they don't have a successful backup within a specific amount of time. So you can either take the default of one day, you can either choose to bypass it, or you can customize that. Once you've made your selection, go ahead and click Add Client. So if you notice, for this client, we did not add a password, and that's because it's going to be an S3 connection for this object client. Instead of a password, we're going to use a secret access key and this access key ID, as well as a certificate. And so this information that comes up is very critical. You're going to need to copy it either directly or to a clipboard and utilize it when you create the repository server on the Spectrum Protect Plus server. The secret access key will only show up on this page. We're just going to leave this screen up and we're going to then switch over to the Spectrum Protect Plus server and as we need we'll switch back here and copy the required information. On this 10.1.3 version of Spectrum Protect Plus server, we're at the front of the dashboard and we're going to drop down into the system configuration panel and specifically the repository server. So go ahead and click on that. You could have multiple repository servers set up for different Spectrum Protect object clients or cloud providers. We don't have any, so we're going to click on Add Repository Server. The first thing you'll need to do is give the repository server a name. And I like to give it the same name as your Spectrum Protect server that you're going to be connecting with. Make sure the host name matches exactly to what showed up on the object client page. You do not want to mix and match with a dotted IP address. You'll want to match the port that was utilized for the object agent. And then you want to create a key name. And for the key name, you'll want to give that your Spectrum Protect Plus server name. Now we're going to go back and copy the access key ID from Spectrum Protect Operations Center and to the Spectrum Protect Plus repository server information. We'll do the same for the secret key. For the certificates, you can either upload it, copy and paste it, or use an existing one. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste it from the certificate that showed up on the object client page. So we'll copy that whole piece there and then paste it back into the Spectrum Protect Plus server registry repository. We want to give the certificate a name that Spectrum Protect Plus can save it by. So we'll say Proto Agent and then we'll click Create. And notice once we click Create for that certificate, it goes from copy and paste over to use existing because that certificate has now been stored in, inside of Spectrum Protect Plus. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and register this repository server. So we'll click register. Read the success message, click OK. And now underneath the system configuration repository server, you do see the proto server that's been registered. And if you go into keys and certificates, you now see the access key and you'll see the certificate that we copied over as well. These certificates might be used again when you're defining other repository servers to utilize different object clients for either the same or other Spectrum Protect servers. So when creating the repository server, the important thing to remember is that the only place to get the secret key is when the object client is initially created. And so if you do lose that secret key or do need to regenerate it for some reason, you'll need to click on the client name inside of Spectrum Protect, click on Details, click on Properties, and then scroll down to the bottom where you have the ability to regenerate credentials. You'll read the warning that it will actually reset the secret key. So go ahead and click OK. And at this point, you now have a new secret access key, which you would want to copy over. And then you could utilize that in Spectrum Protect Plus, either at the initial repository server setup 
or you can go into the access keys, click edit, and enter a new secret key there. And at that point you would save it and your access key at that point would be updated. Okay, back in Spectrum Protect, if we go into servers and then we take a look at the proto server and click on the proto agent that's associated with that server, that'll drill us down into the details page. Now this time object agent, you'll see that it does come up with the pre-existing object agent that we've already created. And then once again, it does give the methodology to start up the agent service if for some reason that had stopped. You can also view the certificate for that object agent directly from here if you needed to recopy that over as well. Some other things you'll notice that are new on the overview page. In the top right, you'll see the object clients and an at risk circle. And so this shows any of the object clients that may be at risk for the Spectrum Protect servers that are being monitored by this particular operation center. Underneath activity, there is a new section where you can click on object clients and that will show you the activity of the object clients over the last 24 hours. I had mentioned the specific policies you might want to associate with a object client. So if you go into policies, select the policy you're interested in, and then go to the policy sets. And here you can see the settings that we recommend for a object client with the backup destination being a container with the backups being set to one with keep extra backups set to zero and deleted backups set to zero as well as keep deleted backups for zero years. If you did need to make any changes, you could do that here. So in summary, Spectrum Protect 817 and Spectrum Protect Plus 1013 allow you to utilize S3 to offload Spectrum Protect Plus data to Spectrum Protect Plus containers. Please check out my next video, which will show you how to set up service level agreements, do backups, offloads, and restores from Spectrum Protect Plus. Thank you.